Hello, I'm sharing a quick video of just a intracorporeal anvil placement for a sigmoid resection. This was a morbidly obese gentleman with a lot of medical uh, comorbidities. And I had already done all the mesenteric division as well as the lateral mobilization. You can see the uh, area of demarcation right there where my left hand is grabbing. Um, given how big the bowel was and how thick his abdominal wall was, I didn't want to have to extracorporealize the bowel uh, to place the anvil. And due to speed purposes, I was not going to do a hand-sewn anastomosis in this case. I'm just showing my preferred method of doing this. Um, I like to do a baker. I think it's the absolute easiest way to get an anvil in intracorporeally, laparoscopic or robotic. Um, you see it happen right there. The anvil was placed through the fan and steel incision, which was subsequently going to be used for specimen extraction. And now we'll go ahead and divide. Um, I was not able to use ICG in this case due to technical difficulties with the machine but um, color change showed that this was more than adequate and I have a clip to the left of my stapler um, where there was pulsatile blood flow uh, on a little poor man's cold knife cut test. So now I'm gonna go ahead and divide the specimen. That's the proximal margin. And then I don't always do this, but in cancer cases, I think that uh, it's worthwhile I close this colotomy just so that when you're pulling your specimen through, you don't um, spill any poop or theoretically tumor cells. So I'm just doing that here. Um, you can make the argument that this doesn't need to be done and you don't need to use VLOC. Um, I was just trying to be expeditious. So again, you know, I think the benefit of the intracorporeal um, anvil placement in this patient, uh, BMI close to 60, um, not having to pull the colon through the abdominal wall um, would have been difficult in the fanosteel location, so you don't need as much length on the bowel. Um, and I didn't want to make an incision anywhere higher up in the abdomen that would be at risk or higher risk for hernia. Um, and so that's why I'm doing what you're seeing here. Prior to doing um, sewn anastomoses, this was uh, almost exclusively my method of anastomosis when I use the stapler more frequently. Now we'll go ahead and staple distally. Again, you can clearly see the color change there. And then we'll go ahead and place the uh, the EEA transanal. I don't like crossing staple lines, so I'm just showing how I'm going to pull that anterior staple line um, posteriorly, and then bring the spike out. I do not worry about ischemia of that little uh, portion of the lip there, much the same as I don't worry about it on the proximal end in between the staple line and the circular stapler. This was a 31 EEA. And then we do a leak test, which was negative, and the patient did very well. Hope you enjoyed.